Liverpool make it 2-1, uh, well worked uh, from a set piece actually and it's Trent with a pinpoint delivery to the man who's obviously always going to score a header today, that was always going to happen wasn't it Jamie, um, Endo <laughs> we've never in doubt him towering header, well directed I think we said didn't we? Placed, Placed. We, were, we, were, Placed. we were discussing can you place a header and I think we have agreed that you can place yeah. a header yeah. Yeah, um, brilliant ball by Trent as per, there was a few uh, brilliant balls for him, there was one in the first half classic pinged crossfield ball that uh, Gravenberg yeah. brought down really well. Yeah, really pleased for Endo. Um, I, I was surprised to see, there was a lot, I thought there was a lot of really good forward passing from him. I mean, I can't, most of us, I, I don't think, knew loads about him when, when we signed him. So I was expecting he'd be like a little kind of terrier type figure, you know, putting out a, a firefighting terrier, if that's uh, if that's possible, putting out fires, you know, all that. But there was there was a lot of really calm stuff from him, turning, getting his foot on the ball, pinging some quite, you know, quite fast, intricate passes yeah. through defence and stuff like that. Yeah, so really pleased for him. Um, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing a bit more of him. In you know, because I've uh, there's been a, there's been a few questions about McAllister recently, and I'm not slagging McAllister at all, but I, I'd like to see him as a as a viable option for yeah. that deeper role potentially in the league mm -hmm. going forward. Do you yeah. know what? Do you know what I, I find with him, and I, I can't quite put my finger on it because I find the timing of his passes through the lines is excellent. I think so. More often than not, yeah, I think so as well. He's really sharp. It's really. Concisive, incisive but, yeah, the word really, yeah, yeah, really incisive, absolutely. But his timing for the crunch tackle is like a, a, a split fraction of a second or something. Or like, if you had a stopwatch every single time, you'd be like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 almost, and you'd find your average where it's just he's just off it. And it's almost to the point where it's not that bad where the, the player gets a, free, a clean run off him. Mm. It's almost like he always gets half of something on the ball, but it's just not enough to put us back on the front foot yeah. and get us back on the attack. And I think maybe that is just a, a bedding in thing. Maybe that is a, the longer I, I, you know, the the more I get, the more game time I get within the setup, the, mm -hmm. the, the quicker I'll be in and I've got to snap into it. And obviously just kind of being alert to those situations, the more you're in it, the more you're alert to it kind of thing. And I think, that's the only drawback from me that just makes me not necessarily wince, but I always just think I can see it. I know he can see it. He's just a little bit slow on that for me. And I think mm. once he gets up to speed, I think he does become the viable option. And I think what you just suggested and I mentioned, I think that to me is when he does definitely become the viable option in that Premier League, you know, whether it could be in for McAllister or whatever it might be. Mm, interesting that. And I think overall tonight, I think he had a decent night, actually, to be honest with you. One yeah, of his, did. probably his best performance today, actually, in Liverpool. Obviously yeah. a goal and he gets a goal as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But generally speaking, his confidence went up after the goal as well. It did. Tell. Yeah, it did. There's a couple of moments. There's one where he sort of does what you're talking about there. He doesn't quite get there at the time and they are they just kind of go round him. He got skinned at one point. Yeah, and the guy even yeah. used his name as if it's like, oh, endo. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. not quite. And that's, that's the sort of stuff you really want to see him doing because that's the sort of stuff we missed so much last season and we have missed a little bit this season as well so it's interesting in that but I'll let you sort of the final word on him Jay if you like in his performance tonight because I think this is a massive step in the right direction you both said there that all of a sudden based on this one performance your confidence in him being that option for the Premier League has gone up is that fair to say? Yeah definitely um, I've you know he's playing uh, I know the the level isn't the same, but he's playing. He's the captain of Japan, who are probably one of the inform sides in yeah, international football. So there's definitely there's definitely a leader there, someone who takes responsibility on his shoulders. You know, somebody who can be. You know, they just spanked Germany four one, and the manager's got the sack. Someone who someone who can mix it with the best midfielders in world football. So. You know, and, and Anonymous did know very much about him, but obviously the, you can trust the scouting team more often than not, they get it right. So, yeah, um, I'd just like to see him maybe getting a few more minutes now. Mm. Um, and and the other the other knock-on effect with that is I'd like to see McAllister as an option further forward as well, because yeah. sure, when, when we signed him, we we all saw him for Argentina in the World Cup, scoring goals for Brighton, score, you know, scoring shots from the edge of the box, playing through balls, stuff like that. I'd like to, 
if he can come in and be used as an option, will that free McAllister? Will you know? Will that get a few people off McAllister's? But I don't think there's been a real, you know, massive negative. It's, it's, it's not criticism of him because we all know this huge caveat in his position. It's we just all, that we know that's the one deficiency in this potential eleven yeah. squad at the moment. He's and almost it, a full guy, isn't he? It is, and yeah. as he's the victim of that of yeah. the circumstance ultimately. And I think you're probably right if we if we are able to trust Endo in that position, and it's again picking the right games for him, mm. understanding the games where. We're not necessarily going to have to have you defend them for your life. It's going to be backs against the walls and you're going to be absolutely rained on by midfielders that are going to outwork you and yeah. you know be, be quicker than you. None of that really matters no. if we're going to have 60-70% of the possession and we're going to be bossing the, the tempo and dictating the play. So there are going to be games where we can throw him in, but I think it is that trust in him getting up to speed mm. to know those moments and just read that. I think he's got the reading of it because it looks like he knows where he needs to be. It's just at the minute, the pace of things are maybe just a little bit too quick for him. And that's fine because as I said to you in the, in the build-up, I think that was very Fabinho-esque until Fabinho got to that Christmas period of his first season and then something clicked and he didn't look back. And, and if we are giving him up, for a similar time of the season, then that's when our difficult fixtures are. Yeah, you got we got United. Arsenal, whether that's difficult or not yeah. is a different conversation. But we got United, Arsenal, um, obviously Man City is quite a bit before that. But we play Newcastle as well on New Year's Day. So if we are getting him ready for that, and he's just got to sort of see us through that little spell, then sound happy days. But I think the only thing I'd say about the Fabinho comparison, and I get it, and it's spot on, but Fabinho. Had time on his side, yeah, which yeah, sounds yeah. really harsh on no, no, yeah, end. Yeah, but it is also, like yeah. we had a few seasons to come with no, Fabinho, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I don't think we have with Endo. I think he's a stopgap, and when you sign a stopgap, I said it the other day on the news. When you sign a stopgap type player, you want him to be plug and play because he comes in, does a job immediately, yeah. and he hasn't done that. So you do start to think, and you start to look at previous signings, Arthur Mello. Ben Davis, who's anger back. And he's not them. He just no, isn't. No, he's better than he's them. He's better than them, yeah. But at the same play. time, you do start to think, well, if he's not playing now, when's he when's ever going to play? Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. it's an interesting one. But I think tonight was a really impressive performance. A step in the right direction. Goal as well. Step in the right direction, yeah. So I think we will start to see a little bit. I hope so, anyway. So we'll start to see more of him.